Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you join us this afternoon for our webinar on growing export markets for agri-foods agri manufacturing. Pardon me. My name is Josh Thompson. I'm with the Economic Development Division of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism, and Skills Training, and I'll be moderating and providing technical support for today's webinar. This webinar is going to touch on many aspects of some of BC's more important facets of our economy, agri-foods, manufacturing, and international trade, but I think you'll find that many of the lessons in today's webinars apply equally well to other sectors. I'm joined today by my colleague in the Ministry of International Trade, Rob Arthurs, who is a Senior Manager of International Business Development, Alison Bolton, International Trade Advisor with the Small Business BC, and Lindsay Muir, an Economic Analyst within the Economic Development Division. To those of you who have attended one of our webinars before, you may notice we've got a bit of a different look and feel. Uh, we're now using the GoToWebinar platform, which we hope will provide a much better user experience for all of you. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on what you think of the new platform, and I encourage you to fill out the short survey, which will launch immediately at the end of the webinar, and also in a follow-up email that you'll receive a week from today. Uh, please also note that today's webinar will be recorded and uh, a link to that recording will be sent to all of today's registrants in that follow-up email a week from now. And before I th hand things over to Lindsay, who's going to go over a very brief intro of how the agri-foods, manufacturing and international trade sectors impact our economy, I'm going to briefly run through some tips that will help you get an optimal experience with GoToWebinar. So on the screen in front of you here, um, you will see um, that this is the control panel that you should have on your screen. Uh, there's a few buttons there that you can interact with. That orange icon there will change um, whether that control panel sort of sticks out into your screen or whether it snaps to the side and hides out of the way. Uh, that blue icon there will make it full screen for you. If you have any questions or if you're, you're having any issues, feel free to use the raise a hand button and I'll chat with you privately as the webinar carries on to try and resolve any issues you might be having. And uh, lastly, we will be having a question and answer period at the end of the webinar, so feel free to type in your questions into the box below and uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can at the end and uh, I'll read them aloud and whichever panelist is best suited to answer the question will uh, we'll hopefully respond. So, uh, with that, I would like to introduce Lindsay Muir. Lindsay joined the provincial government in 2014 and currently works as a program and policy analyst with the Regional Economic Policy and Projects Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training. She enjoys economic policy and some of the primary files she has worked on include manufacturing, aerospace, the Resort Municipality Initiative and the First Nations Economic Development Database. She's currently finishing up her Master's of Public Administration at the University of Victoria, and if I'm not mistaken, she's now done, having defended her, uh, her thesis just a few days ago. And uh, she holds an undergraduate degree in Economics and Communication from Carleton University. Her previous work experience includes working as a mortgage broker, pastry chef, and junior trade policy analyst in the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade, and Development. In her free time, she enjoys cooking and getting out to enjoy the beautiful Vancouver Island scenery. Lindsay, I'm going to pass the um, screen over to you, and uh, we should get your PowerPoint up shortly. All right. Thanks, Josh. So today's webinar uh, touches on three key topics, manufacturing, agri-foods, and exporting. And I'm going to provide a brief subject matter overview of each and the importance that each topic plays in the BC economy. I'm going to start with manufacturing. Manufacturing is a key driver of economic growth and job creation in BC. It contributed over $13 billion to the BC economy in 2013, and it accounts for over 163,000 jobs. Manufacturing is also important in the way that it diversifies the BC economy and lays a foundation for high-paying jobs for future generations. Manufacturing is one of the cross-sector focuses of the BC Jobs Plan, and it touches almost all of BC's key sectors, including agri-foods, technology, forestry, natural gas, and mining. A few of the ways that the BC Jobs Plan has made progress to date for manufacturing include ensuring one of the lowest tax rate in, G in G7 and streamlining regulations in business approvals, launching the Skills for Jobs blueprint to ensure a skilled workforce to support BC manufacturing, and contributing $5 million to unify and grow BC's aerospace sector. We've also supported BC shipbuilding and repair companies in winning over $8 billion in contracts. The next topic is agri-foods. 
Agri-foods is one of the key sectors targeted in the BC Jobs Plan. Since the plan's creation in 2011, 44 of 49 targets have been met, which has helped grow sector revenue by 8%. BC's agri-foods industry produces high-quality, world-class products, as well as a range of economic benefits for BC. The industry yields over $11 billion in annual revenues and accounts for over 60,000 jobs. There is over 1,500 food and beverage manufacturing operations in BC, making food and beverage processing BC's largest manufacturing industry, with over $8 billion in sales. BC's agri-food sector also contributes significantly to provincial exports, with $2.7 billion in exports to over 140 markets. Going on to exporting, BC has an open trading economy, and exporting is responsible for 1 in 5 jobs and 20% of annual economic benefit to the province. Demonstrating the significance of exporting, consider that BC exported over 33 billion of goods in 2013, which is an increase of 32% from 2009. BC's stable economy, business-friendly climate, and geographic location mean it is well positioned to be a North American hub for international trade. Accordingly, international trade is the key so cross-sector focus of the BC Jobs Plan. Some of the progress to date includes a doubling of BC's international presence, resulting in 11 trade offices and 64 staff to help support BC companies to grow exports and to encourage investment. The province has also removed 170 barriers that restricted trade and has contributed to trade agreements such as those with Korea and the EU that will yield expanded business opportunities for BC. Additionally, BC has supported more than 460 inbound and outbound trade missions since 2011. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Lindsay. That's, uh, you know, it's certainly the uh, impact to uh, to our economy from just these three sector loans is uh, is massive and this just really scrapes the surface. But here to tell us a little bit more is, uh, is Rob Arthurs. So Rob is a born social entrepreneur at the, pardon me, serial entrepreneur. At the age of 10, he sold greeting cards door to door. At 12, he had a paper route with 120 customers who never missed an edition at, uh, for the next four years, notwithstanding the harsh Edmonton win winters. That's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty brave of you, Rob. Since that time, Rob has started and run a small oil field trucking company, an HR project management consulting firm to Alberta Tar Sands Company, a maid and janitorial business in Edmonton and Vancouver, a clothing company that in 2000 was one of Canada's fastest growing businesses selling his wares to 450 retailers worldwide. He sold his company and became a certified business coach helping businesses worldwide start and grow by one-on-one -on -one coaching or through his hundreds of workshops. The Olympic Games Secretariat found him there in 2005 and he went on to become the second most requested speaker of the Olympics behind John Furlong, training hundreds of businesses on how to capitalize on the Olympics. After the Olympics, he was asked if he would use his export experience to develop the Going Global Export Training Development Program for the province of BC. Rob has delivered export workshops all over the province in 2011 and continuing into 2012. Since then, Rob has been focused on export development for the BC agri-food sector and helping BC food entrepreneurs enter foreign markets. Not to miss out on his own entrepreneur roots, he and his wife Lisa have a retail clothing store in the English Bay for over 19 years and are just putting the finishing touches on their franchise manual. So Rob, I'm just going to flip the uh, presentation over to you and I'll let you take it away. Thanks very much. Thanks Josh. Yeah, good afternoon everyone and thanks for coming. Uh, did it come? Uh, there we go. All right. So thank you everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. I'll just go back to my original slide. So what is the Ministry of International Trade, uh, or MIT for short? You know, I can explain to you a lot of things about the um, about British Columbia and why we want to why we want to export and what attracts the world here, just some of because of the strategic location and rich natural resources, commitment to innovation, I can tell you that right through to, uh, through our food side, uh, attractive investment and climate, uh, educated and skilled workforce. One of the things that uh, is very important for BC entrepreneurs to know, um, and first of all, we don't compete against DFAT-D, the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, that everybody seems to know, the trade commissioners. Uh, we complement their services, and we do that in a number of ways. We have, um, we have offices around the world. We have t what we call trade and investment offices, uh, TIRs for short, so we have lots of acronyms in this ministry. 
Uh, we have an office in Tokyo, Japan. We have an office in Seoul, Korea. We have an office in Palo Alto, United States. We also have an office in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and a new office we just opened in Los Angeles last week. Uh, we have an office in London, England. We have a satellite office uh, in Hamburg, Germany, as well as Paris. Uh, we have three offices in India, and the office in Bangalore, uh, India, is one of those offices that we call an accelerator office, and it's a free office for anybody to use while you're in market uh, in India for no charge. So may, we make uh, let VC companies use our office as an extension of their office while they're in India. We have three offices in China, um, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. Uh, our office in Shanghai is also an accelerator office for any VC company to use free of charge while you're in market. Uh, we have an office also in Hong, uh, Hong Kong and uh, other offices to be announced uh, shortly. So. These people that are in market, uh, there's about 80 of them right now. They're, they're BC government contractors. They're, they're there to help uh, BC companies penetrate that marketplace, uh, supply market intel by what kind of products are being sold in the marketplace. Is there a, pro is there a place uh, and an opportunity for your company or a product or service? Um, also what they do is uh, a lot of our BC companies are inundated with inquiries uh, from companies they don't know anything about, in particular China. Uh, where we get a lot of companies uh, uh, inquiring from China and you don't know if they're a steel company or what they are and so some of our BC entrepreneurs are a little confused as, as to who this lead is and truly there's a lot of steel companies that are in the agri food business as well. But uh, we'll take those leads from you, we'll vet them, make sure that the company is real so that you're not wasting your time and uh, putting stuff into a container and never getting paid. So. Uh, that's one of the services we offer our BC entrepreneurs is that we will vet those leads to make sure the, the companies are real. Uh, we also offer a lot of strategic support, provide information and contacts, uh, startup assistance. We work very closely. You'll hear later on uh, from my colleague uh, Alison Bolton from Small Business BC. We work very closely with them. Uh, business, like I said, the taxation, we, are, we have uh, Intel, for instance, so we have a lot of inquiries now because Canada just signed a free trade agreement with Korea. So we have a lot of people inquiring um, whether their product uh, is permittable in, uh, in Korea and if so, what the duty is. So we have a, uh, a trade service that we uh, have the staff that will tell you what your, what your duties are and, what your upper, and, and when your duties will come off of the entering the market of Korea or other markets. We do site tours um, and government intel programs. We also do a lot of trade shows, so uh, as we're doing those trade shows, we do trade shows like for this on the agri-food side. Uh, most recently we did the Seoul Food Show in Korea uh, in May, where we had uh, approximately 22 BC companies that came with us over for that show. Uh, it's extremely successful. We built what we call the BC Pavilion inside the Canadian Pavilion, and uh, what I have to say, one of the better booths we've had in one of those shows, and it worked out extremely well. Um, we also do uh, food, uh, you'll, hear, you'll hear later from, I'll, I'll show you a slide out from my partners at AGBC that we'll be talking about some of their trade shows they do. Uh, other trade shows that we do in the seafood side, we do the Boston Seafood Show every March. Uh, we also do the Fancy Food Show in San Francisco, uh, the Natural Products Expo, and we keep adding more and more shows. On the other side of that is also we work with a lot of um, uh, inbound missions. So, most recently at the Comox Seafood Festival, where we brought in 22 buyers from around the world. Uh, companies like MGM Worldwide Resorts were here to buy for their 18 massive resorts. Uh, some of the largest fishing companies in China, Korea, and Japan were also here. And then a week later, we had what we call Food Pro West, where we had some of the largest grocery chain buyers in the world from uh, think groups like uh, Dairy Farm from, from Singapore and Hong Kong. They've got 6,100 stores all over Asia, 101,000 employees. Kroger, Kroger Foods from the United States, they're $110 billion a year. They're the second largest uh, grocery retailer in the world behind Walmart. Uh, so they were here. Um, and then some of the other guys like Aeon from Japan and Latte from Korea and dozens from the, from the Philippines and China and Korea as well. So we do a lot of things to help BC entrepreneurs connect with uh, the opportunities. Um, also connecting with with uh, with lots of investors as well. So we we're inundated with companies that are uh, foreign companies that are trying to invest into BC companies are looking for partners. Uh, we do this a number of ways. We have the Opportunities BC database. So 
Uh, if you're looking for an investment partner, you might want to consider putting a, a little uh, ad up on Opportunities BC, and you can see if you go on there, you're going to see uh, probably a couple hundred agri-food related uh, opportunities of people looking to sell their blueberry farms or looking for partners in cattle ranches and that sort of thing. So it's an opportunity there, and it's, I can tell you that's a very successful site uh, that has been able to connect a lot of BC entrepreneurs to opportunities and, and to buyers. And of course, if you look at the BC opportunity, uh, we're the shortest port to Asia. Um, I can tell you if you're in the freight business, you're certainly looking at this graph and why would you want to ship to Vancouver? Uh, not to mention even the, the labor disputes that are going down in the, our, to our friends in the United States uh, on the West Coast. There's a lot of labor problems, labor unrest right now that's driving a lot of their traffic to the Vancouver ports. And once they get used to using transportation out of, out of Vancouver, uh, chances of those, some of those ports regaining that business when their labor dispute is over is going to be, it will be hard uh, for them to come back. Some of our partners, of course, we work with Agri-Food Canada, uh, Small Business BC, Ministry of Agriculture, uh, my colleagues, Small and Board of Direct, Boards of Trades and Chambers of Commerce, uh, BIAs. Um, we work with a lot of those, there are a lot of people that are, and then not to mention the economic development offices in just about every municipality in the, in the, in the province we work with as well in trying to make sure that we disseminate the information, that they're aware of leads or aware of trade shows or, uh, or webinars like this and uh, being able to connect and find opportunities. It's not just about the Lower Mainland, we're trying to connect uh, province-wide. My friends at uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, we wanted to include them, so we wanted to uh, make sure that they're covered off uh, in this workshop as well. Um, so, of course, in the, in the, as, we, as Lindsay mentioned about the jobs plan, um, we want to drive the uh, agri-food business to about $14 billion by, by 2017. That's part of our mandate. Uh, growing forward, if you don't know what that is, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, you should know because it's a, a $3 billion federal and provincial uh, uh, partnership and it, uh, it helps you, uh, BC companies penetrate uh, foreign markets. It's a, it's, a, it's a matching fund up to $50,000 a year uh, per company where you, if you're traveling to different markets, they'll pay up to 50% of your airfare, your trade show uh, expenses that sort of thing. So it's, it's something that I, uh, I invite all of you guys to explore and uh, take advantage of it. It's a, it's a great fund and I can tell you a lot of our entrepreneurs have already taken uh, great advantage of it and, and, and had great success, which they may not other have, uh, otherwise have if they weren't using growing, growing forward funds. Um, again, there is uh, a lot of programs that uh, the Ag BC does as well. They uh, do a lot of trade shows themselves. They do the Brussels Seafood Show, the China Seafood Show, Food X in Japan. Um, we work very collaboratively with the, with the ministry, so so it doesn't sound it make it sound like we're competing. We're not competing. We're very collaborative in, and deliberate in how we work together. And uh, so it's there's some great things they do. They're going to be doing a new day in, in Germany. Last year they did Seattle in Paris and other show, trade shows uh, to follow. So I invite you BC entrepreneurs to. Uh, Get in touch with myself, or at the end of at this next slide, you'll see some contact information uh, from Matt Patterson from AgBC, and I, I invite you to contact him, Matt or myself, uh, if you want information about trade shows or other programs coming up. So that is, I'll leave that there for just a couple seconds, um, uh, so you guys can write down Matt Patterson's contact information. Um, Matt and I have worked collaboratively together for a number of years on a lot of great projects. Um, and uh, we work quite well together. All right, so let's move on. Uh, and that's my contact information. And I see I didn't put my email on there, and I apologize for that, but it is robert.arthurs, A-R-T-H-U-R-S, at govgov.pc.ca. So as I said, we're not trying to get everything out there in, in this one webinar, but uh, at least to give you a little bit of an overview of our services. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob. I mean, it's uh, it's clear there's there's a whole lot that the province, other organizations, and of course the the federal government are doing to help support uh, international trade. And I I know that. 
things go a lot deeper than what you're able to cram into that short presentation. But uh, for, for those on the webinar, I do encourage you to get in touch with, with Rob if you do have further questions or, or would like some, uh, some additional details there. Before I hand things over to Allison, I'm just going to run a quick poll, uh, which will just help us get a sense of how many uh, folks are actually watching the webinar with us today. Uh, it just gives us a better sense of numbers so we can track and see how well our, our webinars are doing and how we can improve. So feel free to uh, click on that right uh, on the screen in front of you. I'm seeing uh, about 70% of people have, have voted in. Uh, so I'll just give uh, probably another 10 seconds or so to, to let people down. Oh good, seeing some, some groups there, about 11% uh, of you are in groups of four to six or more. So that's uh, great to see there are some groups getting together to, uh, to learn from this as well. Oh, last few uh, entries in there. Very good. And I'm, uh, I'm going to close the polls now. Thank you very much. And so now I'd like to introduce Allison Bolton. Alison Bolton is the International Trade Advisor with Small Business BC, recently returning from living in China and the Middle East. While abroad, she completed her MBA and worked as the China Director of Marketing and Trade Sales with an importer and distributor of North American beverages. Prior to moving overseas, Alison was the Director of Operations for a boutique Canadian winery with exports to over 20 countries. Her enthusiasm for travel and understanding how people live around the world has led her to explore over 30 countries. She uses this experience to help clients and understand not only the regulations of international trade, but also the country's cultural differences that are so vital for businesses looking to succeed in the global marketplace. Allison, thanks very much for joining us. I'm just going to flip over the presentation to you. And you can take it away whenever you're ready. There we go. If you just want to let me know when my PowerPoint is up. You're good to go. We are good to go. Fabulous. So good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in learning about exporting, specifically for agri-foods and manufacturing. Thank you for the introduction, Josh. My name is Allison. I am one of two international trade advisors here at Small Business BC. And I'm going to start by giving you a bit of an overview about Small Business BC. We are a provincial nonprofit, so we work for all small businesses throughout the province. Our vision is really to be a champion for small businesses, and that's defined as companies with less than 50 employees. So probably a lot of you out there, maybe all of the employees are watching this right now. Our mandate is really focused on relevant in information and resources to grow. We want to be able to point you in the right direction or introduce you to experts who can answer those questions. I'm going to touch on three of our key services. The first one is our business planning services. So we actually have a business planning coach on staff here at Small Business BC. And he has two services, coaching for your business plan to get it up and going, and also a re review service. If you have a business plan, you just need an external person to look at it, vet it, make sure everything makes sense and flows, because we know that you've spent so many hours pouring over that document, you need a fresh set of eyes. He's going to cover things like proof of concept and making sure you've really identified your success factors. He also wants to know who are your customers. If you're uh, you know, selling wine, it's not just to everyone of legal drinking age. Who can afford your wine? Who likes what your wine tastes like? Find out who your target customer is. And then in exporting, that can help you determine which your targeting country should be. And of course, the financials. Is this making sense? Is your cash flow feasible? Are you able to allocate the resources that you need to develop an export program? They also do business plan reviews for funding, such as Van City and Futurepreneur. They need community partners to approve, quote unquote, the business plan to get it bank ready. And that's also a service we can provide if you're going to one of those organizations for funding. The second service I'll go over is our market research services. And again, we have a market research analyst on staff here at Small Business BC. So we can do again the coaching for the market research. We also offer some great seminars, and all of our seminars are also webinars for market research. And this I really like because it doesn't just say use market research. It helps you understand how to conduct it, 
how to understand what you've gained, and then how to utilize it in your business plan and in all your strategies. So again, for export markets, this can be really vital. We have some really good information for the US especially that we're able to gain information, as well as other provinces, jurisdictions across Canada. And then that gets into the actual customized research reports that he can develop for you. This could be a prospect list. This could be an actual in-depth analysis of your target market, your really your customers, getting into some habits and some trends. Not just looking in the future, but maybe also looking in the past. You know, has this idea or this product been tried? And how can you tweak it so that you can grow and be more successful? And finally, my baby, the International Trade Advisory Services. As I mentioned, there's two international trade advisors on staff at Small Business BC, and we have three services to offer. One is when you're just starting and you need to get your company registered. You need an import-export account. Do you need a GST number? We also work with our general business advisors to get right down to all the details, like where do you get your business license from? Do you need a PST number? The really practical, hands-on, entry-level steps that you need to accomplish before you can move to exporting. The second is, again, seminars and webinars. These we have both for importing and for exporting. And they're about a two-hour seminar, again, available live webinar and a recording, to go through the basics of exporting. The third is a one-on-one -on -one coaching, where you actually sit down one-on-one -on -one with an advisor. And a little more about each of these. As I said, the export company registration starts right at getting the name approved for the company name you want for your business. Then we talk to CRA with you, for you, to get that GST number, get your business number, get your import-export account that's going to need to be on all the documents when you ship goods out of Canada. You'll also need that number if you're going to be bringing in supplies to make your product. And again, we are the nonprofit resource for the entire province, so everything we do is available in person at our Vancouver office, as well as on the phone or Skype. The seminars and webinars, as I mentioned, they give you an overview to either the importing process or the exporting process. And this is really introducing you to all the players in the export process. This, of course, you've started with your product. But perhaps you're an agent, so you need to find your product, just like you need to find buyers on the other end. So this is really where we start. You also need to understand the export regulations to have that product leave Canada. Certificates, permits, what do you need? Does Canada Food Inspection Agency need to issue you a permit or give you a form to say, yes, this is product is, has met Canada food safety? Of course, customs. You're going to need to talk to Canada Customs as well as the destination country's customs about getting your product into their market and into their economy. Logistics. Are you going to fly it? Can you put it on a truck? Does it need to go on a boat? How fast does it need to get there? And what special precautions do you need to take into consideration? It's really hot on the middle of the Pacific in July. Maybe you need a temperature-controlled container. How much cost is this going to add? Should you, again, move up the order and maybe ship it in April instead to avoid that heat and avoid that cost? Payment and contract negotiations. As Rob mentioned, you know, we want to help you vet the suppliers and the ministry can help you do that, as well as make sure that the contract protects you and your interests in both when you're potentially buying it in Canada and when you're exporting it. And then the final international trade service that Small Business BC offers is the really nitty-gritty one-on-one coaching. This is where we research your product and the destination country or countries you're interested in. This is a one-hour appointment, and this is where the international trade advisors prior to the appointment have done our research. We've looked into some of the databases we have licenses for. We've called our friends at the CFIA. We've probably talked to Canada Customs we figured out the steps that you need to go through to get that product from market to market. This is also somewhere where we can start talking about the real details of in-country specifics like labeling. Can it land in Guangzhou in China and then be labeled? Or does it need to enter, the can pardon me, enter China or whatever destination country already labeled and ready to go?
These are specifics that you need to start working on right away because what if you need to adapt your packaging? I'll pick on wine because that's my background. In Canada, for wines, we're quite familiar with seeing the 750 ml bottles and then the 375 ml bottles. And then if you get into smaller wines, you might see a 200 ml. Well, if you've decided that this 200 milliliter is a great size and you're selling well in Canada and you want to sell it to the United States, the United States doesn't accept 200 milliliter bottles. You need it to be 13 milliliters less. It needs to be 187 milliliters. That's something that you want to find out before you bottle 10,200 ml bottles. So it's little things like that, that because again, we're looking at this from the outside looking in. We can see all these steps that you're involved in day to day and make sure that from production to sales that everything's lined up, getting your exports ready to go. And again, all of our services are available in person in Vancouver, we're down at Waterfront Station, or via telephone or Skype. And leading to that, there's our address, Waterfront Station 601 West Cordova. So that's in the SkyTrain Station, the Canada Line Station, the Transportation Hub. So thank you very much. I look forward to your questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison, for uh, for that overview. And you know, uh, I think this is the the second webinar that we've done with Small Business BC. And e each time, I'm uh, I'm astounded with all of the uh, the expert uh, opinions, advice, and uh, and expertise they're able to bring in house um, to cover such a great swath of uh, economic and business development options. So I think at, at that point that brings us to the Q&A session of our webinar. So feel free to type into the uh, Q&A box on your control panel and uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. I'm starting to see a couple of questions come in now. I'm just going to kick things off as folks are typing those in. So maybe um, uh, first question, uh, Rob, you um, you know, uh, your presentation and what, and what you work with is, is largely agri-foods based. I'm wondering, is for those that are looking, um, you know, that may have joined the webinar that are interested in exporting uh, within other sectors, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, technology, manufacturing, or, um, you know, forestry or, or mining, but perhaps those are uh, too large of, of, of industry for, for most business, uh, small businesses. But uh, where, where should someone go if they're looking to export, but not necessarily within uh, an agri-foods realm? Uh, great question, Josh. Um, I am, I'm a manager of agri-food, but I have counterparts who also do wood, natural resources, uh, uh, technology, education, so there's there's one of me for just about all, all the sectors across the screen. So, so if somebody's interested in uh, clean technology, for instance, we have a manager, a senior manager that does uh, clean technology. So uh, they've got my email. I'd be happy to connect them if, you know, even though this is about agri-food, but uh, if they're looking to connect about their respective sector, I'd be happy to connect them with my colleagues. Great, and thanks. Also, yeah, so Josh, yeah, mm -hmm. the Ministry of International Trade, if you go to uh, BritishColumbia.ca, uh, you will find uh, a directory of other of, of the people working for the government, so you can go that way as well. Awesome, thanks. And uh, just for uh, for convenience, what's your email one more time, Rob, for the audience? Robert.Arthurs, A-R-T-H-U-R-S, at gov.bc.ca. Perfect. That's great. Thanks, Rob. We've got a question here um, from uh, Solveig. Um, they ask, uh, this is a, a question for Allison, um, what, uh, what are the costs of, of some of these services? And, and it may be too detailed to go into over the webinar, but perhaps a, a ballpark or, or a, a link to where someone can go to find more information on that. Certainly. The services start at about $50 for an hour, depending on the, the service and for market research. It's, it's kind of a pay to play in terms of if you want a list of 10,000 prospects, you're going to pay per name. For the international trade services, our seminar is $59 and that gets you access to the live webinar to ask questions like you can now and you'll also get a recording of it. And then the one-on-one -on -one trade advisory services are $69 per hour. Okay, great. Thanks so very we, much. And if, if you wanted to... We're a non-profit, so we keep them as, as low as possible. 
Yeah, and it, it certainly seems to me from from what I've seen out there in the the business consultancy realm, those uh, those prices are very reasonable. Um, uh, another question, um, and and again, uh, Allison, you you touched on this a little bit, but um, you know we've we've heard a lot of news recently about um, China's appetite for BC blueberries. Now, you know, blueberries, I'm assuming, would be a fairly perishable good on the you know the route from from BC to China, depending on the the year that they're shipped and that sort of thing. Are there specific uh, considerations or or resources that folks should look to if um, if they are looking to to export perishable goods, I, I can only assume there's some extra logistical challenges there. And, and Rob, perhaps you can chime in on this one uh, as well. Certainly. So any type of fresh product, also British Columbia's live seafood, is when you really need to be organized ahead of time. Shipping a product like this is when you cannot have any mistakes at the border or any miscommunication with how your transportation, how your supply chain is going to work. So with products like that, most likely they're going to get on a plane. And that's when sometimes the goods can arrive at your destination before your documents. This is something you need to avoid. You can do that, say, two ways. We always recommend have a sample copy of your documents already sent to them to make sure that everything is good to go. Second, when you have the originals, scan them, email them, and then get the originals also in a courier pack. So that's one way to really try and preemptively prepare for any problems because most of the time when I hear about problems with shipping, it's at customs. And that's either because homework hasn't been done, there's been a miscommunication, or they're missing just one piece of paper, maybe it's a label sample. And a lot of times, foreign customs want originals. So that's why, yes, you've faxed it, you've scanned it, it's not good enough. But if you've sent them a copy of the original, at least you can say, this is what is on the way. FedEx comes tomorrow with it. So at least you can get the ball rolling, get the process started. And so that's the way I would say to mitigate any challenges when you're dealing with such a perishable product like live seafood or fresh blueberries. Gotcha. Rob, anything to add to that? Yeah, uh, Josh, um, there's a lot of great companies out there that are doing stuff like uh, a plug for Flying Fresh. They do this day in and day out. They do most of the cherries that are going to China. They hmm. do seafood on a daily basis. But one of the things that our shippers or exporters have got to understand as well is there, there's some new laws coming down from Transport Canada that anything going into a belly of a plane needs to be inspected. So. Uh, even in, including blueberries, and it's now these new laws because of you can think the guy that uh, tried to blow up a plane with his tennis shoe, or someone that put a video uh, a printer cartridge in the belly of a plane, and it was actually a bomb. So all this new stuff is coming down, and you've got to use reputable shipping companies because the, the other thing is that you could you could potentially your perishable could be stuck. So every every flight of cherries that's coming out of the Okanagan going into the belly of a plane. It's coming from a supplier that is a certified uh, shipper. Uh, the, the trucks they use are a certified uh, security truck, so the driver, that everything has been inspected. So when it leaves the facility in the Okanagan, it, the chain does not get broken. That truck does not stop anywhere. It goes right to, say, to flying fresh to their cold storage, and from there it gets out of the belly of the plane, and everything is secure. So there are some things that BC shippers need to be aware of that, that, that could affect their shipping, but it's companies like Flying Fresh that are that are and uh, some of the other good guys out there that are aware of these new laws. But sometimes we it's we, we look for the cheapest the, the cheapest way to go, and that's where we get stuff like Allison talked about. Uh, I've been dealing with a company a couple times that, uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, of people that got stuff stuck in China, and it's because the paperwork wasn't in order. They used the cheapest brokerage firm I've ever heard. I've never I don't even know I've never heard of the company before in my life. So be careful when you're shipping. Make sure you're using a reputable company because uh, yeah, the cheapest is not always the best. And be sure you know uh, your laws before you ship anything because um, some things could be stuck. Yeah, I guess uh, that old adage you get what you pay for stay, uh, stays true even within businesses. So um, it looks like uh, we don't have any more questions coming in. Uh, I'll give it uh, another 20 seconds or so if anyone's uh, scrambling to, to type in any last minute questions. Josh, I've got a couple things that I missed out and I was, gonna, I was looking I... for an opportunity to talk about. But, um, yeah, sure. Sorry, go ahead. There's some, just uh, some upcoming workshops that people should be aware of. Uh, 
being put on by AgBC as well. Um, in Kelowna and Abbotsford, there'll be a workshop in November uh, on agri-food, so it's uh, it's upcoming. The, the location is to be determined yet. And in Burnaby in September, uh, September, October, there's uh, another work, another export workshop. And uh, as well as some other ones which are unique to us in the United Arab Emirates and the Netherlands. So those are some other workshops being put on by our friends at uh, Minister of Agriculture. And uh, I'm sure that we'll be letting Allison know or uh, so we can get it through the grapevine to let people aware of these workshops that are coming down the pipe. Thanks, Rob. And if someone wanted to go find out more information about those, uh, is there is there a website they can go to, say the, the Ministry of Agriculture site? Is there a calendar of events or something they can find? I'm going to I'm gonna go back to my old friend there, Matt Patterson. You, you got his email here uh, earlier on the screen. Um, either either send them an email to myself or to Matt, okay. um, and then we'll, they'll be posted. Once we have firm dates, the uh, Minister of International Trade will put it, post it on their event calendar. And I believe the Ministry of Agriculture will have their uh, post on their website as well. Okay, that sounds uh, that sounds good. We'll also um, I'll get in touch with you, Rob, after the webinar and make sure that we uh, we send that out uh, through our Twitter feed. For those that are interested, uh, we we do have Twitter. We'll, we'll send out uh, invitations to future webinars and uh, some of the other resources that we have to support economic development through throughout BC. That Twitter handle is info BC. So that's uh, EC. D E V info B C and uh, you'll find us on Twitter there. Allison, did you have some uh, some additional comments you were going to add in there? I did, and it's specifically to the events. Smallbusinessbc.ca has an events page, and we will put all of those uh, seminars, anything to do with export, will be on our calendar, as well as all of our seminars. We try and kind of collate any type of small business event onto that. So our website is smallbusinessbc.ca and there's an events page there. So that's one way of getting all events at one time. The simplest thing to do is just sign up for our events newsletter and then they just come to you. Great. Well, uh, I haven't seen any other questions come in, so it seems like your, uh, Rob and Allison, your presentations were, were just that thorough. Thank you very much to everyone who uh, came to attend today's webinar. We'll be sending out, uh, as I mentioned before, a follow-up email a week from today with a recording of today's webinar in addition to um, some additional resources. So uh, a big thank you to Rob and Allison and Lindsay for coming on today to...